Right, I've got with me a friend of mine, Felipe, um, who's very much into permaculture as well, and he's so saved the day because the person who I was supposed to have to talk about transition towns uh, couldn't get the computer working as far as I'm aware. So, welcome, Felipe. Thanks, sir. Uh, thanks, Maurice. <laughs> I'm so sorry to have put this. It's literally like the last ten minutes, isn't it? That it's all it's all happened for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'm glad. I'm glad actually. You know, it's good to good to be on here. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so well, yeah, we might as well. Should we start with uh, if you want to let everyone know uh, the projects you're involved in? You're in Birmingham as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, yeah, the project I'm involved in is called uh, Food Forest Brum. It's actually part of it's um, part of an organisation which is called Spring to Life. It's a community interest company. Um, just to give you a bit of a background of what we do, it's it, we the, the the one of the main uh, hello. Oh yeah, hello. yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, so, sorry, it just went a bit quiet there. It's as uh, the main the organisation is 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 about promoting kind of well being, both personal and and community well being um, in Birmingham and food forest broms has developed from this and the idea is is about working with communities all over birmingham and and beyond the surrounding areas uh, to help them develop sort of permanent uh, food landscapes so this will range anything from sort of orchards to food forests um, forest gardens to even just supporting if there's a school who wants a couple of fruit trees planted uh, but all the way to you know sort of edible hedges you know herbs uh, the idea is very much about um complementing annual vegetable growing but but it's very much about promoting the perennial foods and, and thinking on, on, on I guess on, on various levels really on, on on the one hand it's about a lot of it is about resilience and obviously uh, it's a bit of a given now that in order to be as as our communities to be actually resilient and sustainable we need to be growing around our, our own food for a whole you know host of different reasons both you know global climate change but also our own sort of health. Uh, and all, all all sorts of other things, but it's also about sort of promoting the idea of of of, of perennial foods within the context of, of of permaculture. I mean, for me, the the idea part part of the idea of what why I thought it would be good to do something like this is to promote the ideas of permaculture in a in a very sort of practical way, without necessarily calling it permaculture. But it's about promoting the the those ideas. Uh, and we, we engage with a range of, of different groups, so it, it'd be kind of either schools or community centres or community gardens, uh, you know, allotment groups. So we have people like, you know, an age women's group who are going to give a couple of fruit trees to, uh, you know, mental health groups. Um, it's very much on, on, on the going on the sort of grassroots level, so it's working within with communities. So it's about creating like a food resilience from, from the ground up. Yeah, well, I mean, we've had the selection of uh, trees and bushes from you, haven't we? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and and what you what you doing in your project? I mean, it's idea what that's what we really wanted to promote is because obviously you have a an actual permit culture um, project, so the idea is to promote what you're doing across other areas, and and particularly the idea of forest forest gardens. I mean, if listeners don't don't really know what they are, the forest gardens is what the primal thing that we're aiming for, which is what we've given new plants, particularly to create a forest garden. Yeah. And a forest garden is very essentially, um, it's about modelling natural woodland systems, uh, but making them proactive and edible and medicinal. Um, uh, so you have different layers. So you'll have the canopy, the top layer, the tree layer, then the shrub layer, uh, then herbaceous uh, layer and climbers. So basically, it's like a woodland that you'd see, uh, but it's an integrated system. So it's like a community, it's an ecosystem of elements of plants that support each other so one what might fit, fix nitrogen others might you know bring in bees that, that then pollinate the trees and obviously and, and what you're doing over in uh, in Samuel at Salop Drive you're, you're, you're doing this creating this forest garden so we, we, we're hoping to promote it and we, we're very much interested in, in acquiring tree, uh, these plants which we give out for free so all, all the all the basically most of what we do is free so we give plants for free um, and we also give um, training for free so we've carried out fruit fruit tree pruning uh, and grafting workshops uh, free of charge ideally working within sort of deprived areas as well yeah mm, well yeah i mean it's been a massive help for us felipe in fact we've been chatting about that this week because you know a lot of these groups get to a certain size and then sort of set up as a community interest company yeah uh, but uh, we've decided to fly under the radar <laughs> What do you mean? Plan? <laughs> for the time being. Well, we're not going to apply for any funding intentionally. I mean, we've done, what, a year now without funding. And it, as you say, it's basically just the information that we want to impart on people. 
and yeah. just keep it really low key because the more you start to get organized the more you sort of move away from what you're meant to be doing which is just right right okay yeah 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 absolutely i, I didn't realize that okay yeah 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 i mean it's amazing what you can do i mean i'm involved in another project it's a community guard work with refugees and migrants we're going on for about two years and i mean it's and that's the thing is that a lot of people think that just because you haven't got funding then that's it you know they they, they, they see it as a massive obstacle but this project uh, it's called Pashinga community guard and we've been going on for two years for very 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 minimal funding and it, it's 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 but uh, i think the primal thing that drive that can drive a project uh, and and drive this this amazing energy that goes on community is, is that passion is that drive to think you know actually we can do something and we, we don't have to rely on, on money uh, you know you just need you know a bit of land and you need the, the passion and the motivation and that's that's what sort of keep you going really obviously you know money is 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 a is you know it's great you know once you've got it but um i think it's important to know that you don't necessarily need it to to uh to do these things really i mean in terms of a garden you know what do you need what money do you need to you know have a garden you know just get you can collect seeds you can you know seeds you know people give away seeds and, and that's you know you get a few tools you can get stuff free from free cycle and that's you know it's uh you can easily operate like that yeah definitely definitely well it's um yeah, it's been very interesting because whenever you talk to the council, the first thing they ask you is how much money you want. <laughs> so, um, yes, I have been chatting to the council because we want to get a community build thing. But I think the fact the fact that we haven't got funding, it may, you know, it brings stability really because a lot of these projects are dependent on the funding, and a lot of them are dependent on council funding. So, um, you yeah. Know, we're kind of just growing organically, really. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the thing. That's beautiful. It is that, it's that resilience again. If you, because I think there's that mindset that once you rely on funding, then suddenly if that funding is cut, then you know, then that's the end of it. But you know, if you start from the bottom and you think, you know, you know, from you know where you're coming from, is that you don't, you know, you can be completely, you can, you can be completely. Or, 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 in that sense uh, and you know a bit of money would be a bonus but you know if you haven't got it you, you can still carry on so yeah definitely definitely well we haven't be we haven't been able to put the uh, the plants in yet um, but I'm particularly interested to um, see how the Siberian pea tree goes if you if you ever oh, okay yeah have you grown one of those before Felipe? I have grown yeah I mean it's one of those I think it's one of those learning lessons because <laughs> It's uh, I just got so excited about all these amazing plants, so I just went and ordered loads. Um, yeah. But it's like the whole thing about permaculture is that is about you, you know, before you buy the plants, you need to understand the land that you got. And in my my allotment, it's just got very, it's very clayy, sort of uh, quite moist. And and I got um, uh, you know, Siberian pea pea tree is 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 kind of it's 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 like well drained soil, so it hasn't been doing that too that well at the moment. Um, but I, I might end up moving at some point uh to somewhere a bit more or sort out the soils um or put it in a contained something something that's a bit more well drained so uh but i think you know it's just you know if you've got the right space for it then it's it's amazing for it really because it's um you know for the siberian peace shrub is it's a nitrogen fixer it gives it comes back every year so th there's no issue about you know having to dig up the you know dig up the, the soil again uh, and you get little pea, pea shrubs pea, little pea pods um and it's very extremely hardy being siberian as well um yeah yeah, yeah. so um yeah yeah but no i look forward to seeing you at your forest garden actually it's um so hopefully when the weather gets a bit better you'll be able to put them in yeah oh i know well we we're going to put them in today well that's no it's absolutely ridiculous isn't it <laughs> yeah i know i know yeah yeah so yeah so um so have you got basically all the plants just to fill in the whole space then in your, in your forest garden totally no we did establish a little bit of ground cover and i think major um i've got some alpine strawberries um but there, there was a lot of well there is a lot of clover on that patch so um i do that in right. my own garden just tend to let the clover grow through right okay. cover. Yeah. obviously that's a nitrogen fixer as well so yeah um, it benefits the <laughs> makes the nettles grow <laughs> they love yeah. nitrogen rich soil don't they 
Yeah, 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 excellent. I think excellent. it's a bit of a misconception because you think of um, nettles as growing on sort of scrubland and just land that isn't immensely fertile when actually they do like quite a rich soil, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the beauty of a lot of these these plants. I mean, a few years ago, I was just so fascinated by these, um, what they call like indicator plants. Yeah. Um, you know, the different weeds that indicate uh, a type of soil and, and the classic one is nettle which indicates fertile soil so gen- generally you know i mean not not 100 always but generally if you've got you know a lot of nettle means that you obviously you've got you've got fertile soil so is, is your plot quite fertile then is, yeah. I, mean, I assume with it being a market garden there must be a lot of fertility there um yeah well the thing it's on sort of a slight um gradient isn't it so um all the nutrients kind of the, the vegetable beds are higher up, so all the nutrients run off to that corner. Um, oh, okay. Mm-hmm, mm, so, which is, yeah, it's been a bit weird because um, it's it's kind of the wild area, but obviously they they could have sort of wanted a meadow area, but really for meadows you want less rich soil, don't you? So right, right, right. Yeah, so there's a patch on there that they've filled with a load of stones to try and you know rubble it up a bit and make it a bit less fertile so i have sown uh, some okay. wild flower seeds there um so hopefully uh, <coughs> we'll how they'll get on but uh, yeah yeah it's, i mean it's in terms of dra- i mean i was just wondering in terms of, what is it kind of is it is it moist or is it kind of well drained that that bit because do you say it slopes down into that corner it, it, it does it does it, it was fairly well drained but then in fact i need to investigate because um a spring has popped up um oh, really? yeah wow. yeah it popped up just um there's sort of it's a little patch in the corner isn't it and then there's a pond a small pond uh, just the other side of the pond um and then it's kind of come underneath and it's coming up on the path um wow. <laughs> which is an ideal so i need to apply a bit of permaculture there because um, yeah, I mean, if, wheelchairs go down <laughs> there and stuff, so um, we need to sort it out. Yeah. Maybe find a use. I mean, if, I mean, sorry, finish what you're saying. Um, well, that was it, really. We just need to find a use for it, but I mean, I'm not sure um, how what sort of quality the water would be. That site has been allotments for many, many years. I think at least right. 50 years, but it is a massively industrial area here, isn't it? So it's pretty contaminated yeah. in most those places oh is it really really mm. Mm. Oh, okay yeah well i mean if if i mean if you are interested if you feel i mean if you get a sense that or find out that it is okay to to plant stuff there uh, and it's it's clean i mean um with food forest fun we're very much interested in, in almost filling all the microclimates and niches so whether it's moist or shade or you know areas um you know well drained or you know with rubble basically find plants that suit each, each, each suit each kind of each condition so I'm, I'm at the moment i'm putting in an order through uh, an amazing kind of nursery called uh, called temperate uh, nursery based in nottinghamshire um and they provide lots of unusual forest garden type plants and and i'm particularly ordering things that are either in sh- shade loving but also uh, moist moist loving so there's if it, if you if you if you want anything to suit the kind of a, a, an area where there's a little spring where they they might get a bit of, of water or, or a bit of dampness sometimes of the year then you know let us know there's some you know very sort of interesting plants that that can go in those sort of places. Mm, I think um, watercress is a good one, isn't it? Because you can literally just keep cutting the tops off that and then rerooting it, can't you? What watercress? Mm-hmm. Mm. yeah i mean it's interesting with that actually because i mean i don't know if have you i don't know if you've grown watercress much but I've, i did hear that there's a bit of an issue that it has to be on flowing water and that you could there's a if you don't grow it well if it's in stagnant water then it can get a like there's a quite a horrible disease that comes from that do, do you know much about that have you, have you grown it um, much i haven't really i tend to stick to land crest to be honest because that's a right. fantastic one isn't it i mean it's so hardy yeah. And it's self seeds yes, like mate. yeah. Apart from last yeah. year when it just hated, it was just too wet for it. But that's the first year, right? Is that what, landcrest? Is that like the because I'm growing at the moment one called American landcrest. Is that the same one? I'm not sure. It got a bit sort of a wavy leaf, and it's quite peppery. Yeah, extremely peppery. Yeah, I yeah. maybe it's a very because the one that I put in the ground is isn't doing too well, but. 
the one in the um in the containers just doing it's just survived all winter doing amazingly so uh, yeah. so yeah it's, uh, yeah that's, those are brilliant oh, oh well i'll definitely collect seeds for mine this year i'll put them in the seed bank because mine seems quite well uh well adjusted it's done a few, uh, okay. a few winters in my back garden it's kind of right, okay. place. so it's quite interesting that isn't it you know to how um plants and seeds can sort of um evolve to locality and you know be become suited to where they grow yeah i mean that's the interesting thing i don't know if i told you but um we so, uh, my paid work is is we do uh, some work over at uplands allotment in hansworth which is la- the largest mm-hmm. allotment in the country um, and they, you get people there just basically they've been doing it for decades uh, and there's some you know quite a large amount of sort of jamaican people there who've doing, been doing gardening for a long time there's some people there that basically they've brought exotic plants uh, the kind of vegetables that they've grown uh, and it's absolutely incredible they've built this um this seed this this basic seed bank from just basically by selecting the seeds of the most successful exotic um of plants that, that come out every year of these exotic ones and they've created these these kind of seeds and plants that are suited exactly just for the for the for the conditions of birmingham and this is over you know you know years and years and years of of selecting the best the best plant uh, and and this is you know you know not even in the most kind of specialized amazing kind of um you know seeds um seed supplier can, can provide this but it's amazing that you know what what can be done on that grassroots level just to create these these these, these amazing kind of um, ideas exactly. and sort of and plants just you know as you say to, to suit different your own sort of very specific niche your own kind of climate mm-hmm. well i didn't realize they had a seed bank like that up there i'll definitely have to go and visit them <laughs> yeah i think i'll speak to uh, the main guy um to the committee the main guy on the committee i don't think i don't know how official it is but it'd be great if we could sort of you know to link up with these sort of people really because they do some yeah it's some, some amazing stuff and, and i think it would fit you know if we could get those on your seed bank i mean that'd be amazing really oh it'd be fantastic uh, yeah well we're yeah. really pushing that you know there's um yeah that reminds me i need to get my seeds sent to you as well or where we meet in the next few weeks oh. I'll, I'll definitely get some seeds for you yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we we have managed to fill up a bit, and people have been great. I think they're taking it on board. So when we did the um, the big dig event the other week, um, people were putting back into the bank, which was nice. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> have you so, yeah. have you got any amaranth at all in your seed bank? Um, we did well. We had some um, callaloo. Oh, okay. That's, that's the same thing, isn't it? I always wonder about that. I know it, I don't know if they're slightly different, but um, I know some people call Kalaloo amaranth. But I've always, I, I've, yeah. when I've grown them, they seem slightly different. But um, yeah, I just wonder because I've got loads of amaranth, and and that's just amazing as a as a salad crop. Um, and it's just so you know, it's one of these amazingly nutritious foods, and just so ridiculously easy to grow as well. Um, yeah, I was just wondering um, if you could, because I know very little about it. Um, how how uh, much do you know about companion planting? What what sort of things should be planted alongside each other for for best results? And why? And yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. About companion planting, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, that that's it, interesting you say that because it, it, before when I first got into permaculture, the, the companion planting thing is the thing that most sort of attracted me to to that. Um, I mean. Th- I, I mean, to be honest, I, know, I don't know, you know, a huge amount. I mean, there's like the whole universe of different plant combinations, but basically, the, the, the basically there's there's different kind of strands within the companion planting kind of idea. Some of them might be um, because they might attract, po- you know, pollinators. Some of them because it might be because they attract kind of pest uh, predators, uh, and also others that might give um, different. Uh, you know, might be just beneficial by growing kind of next to them. Uh, so, I mean, there's a, the classic um, companion planting for growing annual, annual vegetables is what they called, uh, it's the Three Sisters, I think it's called, uh, which is what the Native Americans grew. And basically it's um, sort of beans, kind of sweet corn and squash or, or pumpkin. Uh, and it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's just a beautiful, it's what they called a, a guild. So it's like, um, it's like that. It's, it's 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 the idea of companion planting, but taken to the next level. So it's a, it's not just two plants, but it's it's three or, or more, uh, and it's called a guild. And it's basically the the bit the uh, the sweet corn um, is quite is quite uh, it likes a lot of fertility, 
So the beans will provide the nitrogen for the sweet corn. The sweet corn will provide a climbing structure, uh, a pole for the, for the beans. And then the, the squash, which is also it's a hungry feed, it's a, feed, a hungry feeder. So likes nitrogen would also get the nitrogen from the beans. Uh, and then the squash will actually provide a ground cover layer to keep the weeds down. Uh, so that's just that's just such a beautiful idea of of that mutual beneficial relationships, which I think you know it's one of the things that should mirror how we how we all kind of operate. Um, I mean that's one example. Then there's others uh, which I like I like very much doing it is when when you know fruit trees and growing you know a lot of herbs is is, is to grow, grow next to fruit trees so generally if you uh, you want when you plant a fruit tree I, I, I generally tend to like to put other things so at least a type of allium so it can be either a, an annual allium like you know garlic or onions or it can also be um uh like perennial um allium so there's a thing i got one called babington's leek which is a bit is a bit like a garlic uh, and that keeps away the the um the pests and then you might, you know, plant sort of flowers to, 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 you know, bring sort of pollinators. I know there's other, I mean, there's herbs like, um, uh, I don't know, nasturtiums. I mean, they're, they're amazing to grow. They, they're good to, to grow with, with fruit trees, but they're also very good, good to grow with, with cabbages because they, they, apart from, no, no, apart from that, but they, they, they also provide a distraction to, for example, to the cabbage white butterfly, they would go to the nasturtium because they, they love the nasturtium. So they, they would eat your nasturtiums instead of your cabbages. And then there's also a find strawberries growing with borage. They Strawberries do a lot better if they grow next to borage. So I don't know exactly how that works, but they, there's something that happens within with those two plants that the, 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 um, the strawberry benefits, where it's quite, benefits, you know, a lot from it. So uh, does that answer your question? <laughs> That's, it does. that's great absolutely yeah. brilliant thank you yeah i just learned an awful lot i, I believe we've got nary back now as well yes, i'm back now i'm so sorry felipe i think it's my rubbish computer sometimes i jump in and out for some reason oh okay well tell me about it so if i jump in and out it'll be my rubbish computer but <laughs> well no i don't know i don't know anyway yeah but there's plenty of people to ask interesting questions anyway if i do so um but yet some, some plants are actually inhibitors, aren't they, Felipe? If you, you know, like yeah. herbs, certain herbs yeah. stuff, that's quite interesting as well. What, they in, inhibit the growth of other plants? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, I think it's called allelo, allelopathic or something like that. Yeah, uh, allelopathic. Oh, I don't an, know. Alle- allelopathic, yeah. That makes, From the accent and I pronounce it wrong. <laughs> allelopathic. Oh, no, your size, is, your size is better than mine. Yeah, I, to be honest, I don't know a huge amount and I don't know exactly what it is, but I know, for example, fennel is one that they say not to grow with many other things. Uh, and also walnuts, apparently, is that, you know, generally you shouldn't grow anything near walnuts because walnuts um, will stop the growth of, of other plants. But, yeah, actually, I mean, sorry, just go, what, the one thing that I forgot to mention about the companion plant, is which, uh, I, which I love. I mean, if anyone's into kind of, um, you know, herbs and herbal medicine, apparently if you grow, uh, what's it called? If you grow right yarrow next to a herb, it that actually increases the... the um, the, the, the oils, the, the beneficial kind of oils, basically what makes a herb uh, medicinal or aromatic is uh, basically if you grow yarrow next to it, 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 will, it will make it a lot more potent. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, I'll definitely try that one. I haven't heard that one. Yeah, yeah. I think for me it's one of those things, and, and it's like, um, it's one of those things that what I want to do more is have patches of yarrow and comfrey, uh, you know, around, because obviously if you have, say, your yarrow next to your compost, you, you, mm. you also throw the you know yarrow into the compost and it's a very good compost activator uh, and then you know patches of comfrey which is obviously an amazing companion which is good to grow next to fruit trees so you can do the sort of the chop apart from bringing um uh, you know bees for for the for the for the trees it, you can do the, the chop and drop method so you basically mm. you, you know you chop the leaves of the yarrow, of the of the comfrey put it next to your your trees um and and just so you know and over time you create you create amazing fertility really Mm, actually that might be a good thing to add to the seed bank because i've got comfrey it um roots quite easily doesn't it cutting yeah it. yeah i mean they say a lot of places say you know don't they don't want i mean i, I was offering it to, to plant in in various places with fruit, food forest brum mm. but uh some places didn't want it because it's it's it, it can be quite uh invasive uh i don't know exactly what kind of soil it would it would go 
you know, rampant on. But I know some places where it just completely takes over. But it, uh, the way I see it, you know, if you're going to have a weed, if you're going to have either, um, you know, like cooch, cooch grass or creeping buttercup, or you're going to have comfrey, you know, you might as well go with something that creates all this amazing fertility. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I've got um, a couple of questions. I, I, I have uh, aquaponics, they're only very small. Oh, I've been really well. Wow, brilliant. Um, only very small system. Oh, are you back, Maurice? Yes, I'm back. There you oh. go. Yeah, there you oh. go. You might as well take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Felipe, how actually did you get into permaculture? Because I don't think we've ever had that conversation. Um, it's an interesting one, really. I mean, it, it, because I, I've never... It, when I got into permaculture, I wasn't even, even that into gardening. Someone... Someone told me about it, but it, the, the context of it was is that I was I was um, I used to be in well well I used to do a lot of envi- environmental activism kind of various campaigns and different bits and bobs, and I was also at the same time very much into sort of Taoism as a sort of philosophy, and with with Tao, or Taoism, Taoism on the one hand, it, I mean obviously it's it's very much it's almost it's almost it's the philosoph- I mean I see it as almost the the philosophical you know extension of of um, of permaculture in the sense of about living in harmony with nature and modeling how, how you live in harmony with nature and there's all these kind of strands within my life in terms of that passion that I had for nature that you know the, the worry about what we're doing to the planet um as well as 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 more of a, a deeper sort of more sort of spirit, spiritual kind of a sort of background to where i was coming from um and then someone told me about permaculture and, and i thought you know that it's just it's one of those things that makes absolute perfect sense you know in in you know in in a world of where we are at, at the moment what we're doing to the planet what we're doing to each other um you know the, just the, the sort of um almost the idiocy and the and how it, things seem so illogical how we go about things for me it just seems so, suddenly hearing something like, uh, like permaculture which makes you know it i mean it's so in a way it can, it can be complicated you know if we you know this you know all these different ideas and these principles and everything but the bottom line is that it's something which is so simple and makes so so much sense and it's it's the whole thing about it's it, because it is working with nature it's working within in harmony with our own home and it, you know that's what make, makes sense and that's what, the thing that really sort of grabbed me really and it just seems something just seeing hearing it then i started looking into it and then seeing what basically what just amazing stuff that people are doing around the world and it's like it's um you know basically you know they say that you know these the people there's people creating solutions to like a whole range of different problems and the background to it is is sort of permaculture uh whether it's you know there's these amazing projects over in in jordan or in the desert about you know greening the desert or you know creating you know sort of helping people with um with areas with where there's been sort of disaster areas and build compost toilets or, or um this this is one thing that really inspired me this um i don't know if any of you heard is um a, a, a person um a woman called starhawk who's like um she's a, a she's a permaculture activist but she's also a sort of a, a pagan witch um, and she does all sorts of absolutely incredible stuff in the u.s but she did this thing called bioremediation and with hurricane katrina she went in with these sort of permaculture ideas and she'd taught you know local people on a grassroots level to how to you know clean up their their land using bioremediation and using plants to clean up soil uh, and using you know mushrooms to clean up so you know contaminated land and then to be able to grow food um and basically all these just amazing things i was just started coming across and i realized yeah it's just it's just kind of the way forward really i think it's to without too in, sounding too sort of uh, missionary about it, it it felt like it's just this is the thing that's gonna it, one of the, these tools that we can that we can adopt uh, as as a species to really kind of help s- not just save the planet but you know make it thrive as well it's it's one of these things that it, it's just such a for me it's, it, it connects the um what we can vision you know we have we can have all these kind of visions about what our, our, our utopia or or something you know beautiful that we can that may be very different to what we have at the moment but i feel permaculture is something that we can can bridge that what we have now and what what our vision is because it's not just it's not just about you know working with the land i mean it's the starting point because that you know that that's that's where we are but um it's also about how we can live as as um as a society how we can live our own personal lives how we can relate to other you know other people 
Um, so you know, it's just it's it's everywhere. Really. I mean, they they say that you know, it's perm, permaculture came from, um, you know, Malcolm, um, bringing the two words, you know, permanent agriculture together. But now they talk about permanent culture. So it goes beyond, you know, agriculture. It's more about how we live our lives and, and you know, socially as well. Oh, definitely. I think it, you know, it, it's all um, connected, isn't it? Really, you know. Absolutely. Um, I, I, it's, I love, you know, it's so interesting seeing some of these projects in other places in the world, like Africa, uh, you know, where they can go and put these systems in that work and they can grow food. You know, when in the West we kind of bombarded with that, we must we must throw money at third world countries. You know, it's a, it's a bit like it's the microcosm and the macrocosm, isn't it? Cause it's similar yeah. about talking about funding with our group here. You know, it's not money that they need. It's, you know, the, the knowledge passed on. Yeah, um, absolutely, exactly, exactly. And, you know, <laughs> and it, it's interesting. It's a bit like when we talked about the allotments before, about talking to older gardeners. It was a conversation everyone was having the other night, I think, about oral traditions and, you know, sort of in religious context or sort of shamanic context. Oh, the really? The oral oh, traditions. Wow. But, well, I was pondering on this and thinking, you know, really gardening is one of the last sort of oral traditions that still just about exists within <laughs> the human race, you know, because yeah, it is one of those oh, things that you can go and just talk to old gardeners and, you know, they don't know the Latin name of the plant. <laughs> You'll go, what's that one? And they'll go, oh, that's the one that has the white flower. <laughs> yeah, but they'll yeah. still be able to tell you exactly what it does and exactly what it needs and how to grow it, you know. Yeah, 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 so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. so it does, it links together because it, it, that in itself creates community then. Well, so, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, the, yeah, yeah, that's exactly. I mean, that, that, that's the thing for me is um, I remember like, uh, it, was, it was actually about a year ago I had this, I had this, it had this sort of strange sort of, sort of breakdown where I felt kind of like overwhelmed by um, just the, the state of everything I just felt really really in tune and sensitive to you know what we're doing to the planet to basically the you know the the, the doubt whether we will actually survive as a species and um, and then the social aspect you know what we're doing to each other you know to people the wars and everything and then then I, after that there was like a series of things that happened but then it was the realization that food uh, and what our connection with the land that's 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 holds the key to, to so many of the, of the things it was almost you know, it ticks so many boxes because it's, it's about feeding ourselves, it's about health, but it's also about, like you say, connecting with communities. It's, about, it's, it's, it's at the point where, food, you know, food traditionally, you know, in, in indigenous cultures, being, you know, in cultures all over the world, it's when people come together and eat. And, uh, you know, that's where, the, you know, the social aspect has, happens. But when we come together and grow as, as communities, that's where we can sort of connect uh, in the same way that we talk about, you know, companion planting, like, you know, you talk about microcosms and, you know, one thing reflecting another. We we see ecosystems rather than in competition to each other. They 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 they're very much in in um, collaboration. Um, and you know, we can apply that to ourselves as well, to how we work. Um, you know, as as, a, as an ecosystem, as an in- integrated ecosystem around, you know, the, the growing of, of of food. Definitely, definitely. Well, I think you know we're. Uh... We're not doing too bad now here in Birmingham, are we? There's a lot of groups that are, are getting connected up and working. Yeah, definitely. It's, yeah. it's absolutely amazing what's going on now. Definitely. So, um, yeah, it's quite positive. I mean, we kind of had some conversations a while back, didn't we, that per- Birmingham wasn't on the permaculture map <laughs> in comparison to sort of Bristol and London and stuff. But um, we're oversubscribed now for our um, beginners permaculture course. Oh, are you really? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. It seems oh, it it's, was... actually, I think it's, it, it's it, I'm sure we spoke before, but it's one of those things that it, Birmingham is so, it's, it's so fragmented, so large. So we, we, it's almost that like we didn't mm. know, it's, it's not that there wasn't enough going on, but we just don't know about the things that do go on. And suddenly, it, it, all, all it involves is to create, it's to create more networks. And that's the thing about, mm. you know, I think that's the way forward generally, how it's not just Birmingham, but anyway, it's, it's about, it's about connecting and it's it's like it's like the you know like the um, permaculture principle is is the of the edge. That's mm. where you know the, it's not just the edge. I mean, uh, just for the listeners again, if you know you don't understand the idea of the edge, is basically in in the edge between different um, ecosystems in in nature is where there's most life. There's where most wildlife where there's more pro- most productivity. 
so if you think about a garden you would create m- more edge between you know like edge like rather than a circular pond you create um you know a, a curved pond with lots of edge but it's also creating that edge within within communities so it's the edge where people meet where people share ideas where people connect um and it's creating that edge within all you know this network of of of, uh, of of projects going on in Birmingham, and that's why with things like you know the big dig, which has been um, really positive for bringing those people together, and what what we're doing with Food Forest Brom as well. One of one of the big aims is about creating a, a network and and connecting and you know doing sort of Skillshare events and and kind of workshops and kind of reskilling and uh, and and it's just the the thing about seeing that you know people, uh, which I've realised a lot even just in the last month is that you know we we all have obstacles uh we all have things that we're lacking uh and but we, we all also have resources we all have things that we have a lot of we we have surplus of uh whether it's ideas or land or money um and and it's only where we start connecting and 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 seeing meeting other people is that we we realize that other people will have resources that will that um or surplus things that will that will um benefit us and we all have um things that will benefit them and that's where you know a lot of things that I've noticed are happening recently are, beca- are thanks to those connections and th- that you know collaborative work between groups. Mm, definitely, definitely. Well, I think we'd like to you know do a lot more sort of site visits to other groups this year if we can, and really get that visiting each other thing going. You know. Well, that's. I mean, if you're interested, actually, what I really want to do, uh, and I'd r- love to involve your your project. Uh, with Food Forest Brum and Spring to Life, we were organising something called like um, garden safaris. So we'll yeah. we'll hire minibuses, um, and then we'll get say a couple of people from each project, and we'll go and visit different projects around. Um, and we're trying to think, obviously, have a, a bit of a spread of the type of project and a spread of projects around Birmingham. Uh, but I think yours is sort of so unique, and I think in the spirit of promoting permaculture, I'd love to uh, you know to include yourselves in it, so we can go and visit you, and if you wanted to come and visit others. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. That be great. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully we'll. Uh, you know, I really want to get a permanent base and kind of get a resource area set up. I've got a library ready to go. I just need somewhere to put it. <laughs> you got a library, um, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, oh, you know, and I want somewhere for the seed bank. But uh, we kind of oh. we've been chatting to the council, but um, I think the uh, the allotment project we were trying to sort uh, as. I think we've lost Nairis there again. She's back. Sorry, oh yeah, I'm I'm cu- cutting in and out, so I can only hear everything. You're the I can't catch everything everyone's oh. saying. So what happened with the allotment project then? With the council? Um, well, basically, there was um, a local councillor who was um, heading up the project as part of uh, a, a resi- like a community association, um, but the council don't like her because. Yeah, she's popping in and out, isn't she? She's an <laughs> impressive lady. But now, it's a bit of a long story. An explosion happened by a house. Um, she was liaising with people. She was putting things on Facebook about it. The council asked her to stop. I don't know why, because they weren't involved. Um, <laughs> and now they're accusing her of all sorts. <laughs> they're really? accusing her of, yeah, because her car was written off because this explosion was massive. It was an alcohol factory. Um, she oh, lived cool. right by there. She got a new car, and the council called her in and said they'd had an anonymous letter saying that um, she'd forced the MD of the company to buy her this car, which is a load of bullshit. <laughs> um, and now, I'd quite like to get her on here actually and have a chat about it because um, it's really. She sent me a message which is really cryptic, saying that they're accusing her of um, kidnap or something. What? It's most. I oh know. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely God, crazy. God, that's proper dodgy. Now, sorry, say that again. No, that's just really dodgy, though. I mean, it, it, it's well, like it is. well, I think because you see, we were talking to the council about this project, and she's very knowledgeable on legislation and whatnot. So they're massive. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, lease agreement. They keep trying to slip loads of contingencies into it, but we were noticing them. <laughs> And right. I think they just wanted to basically now other councillors have said that her being involved in this project, which is for and by the community, mm. um, is a conflict of interests. 
Really? Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, no. that's terrible. Yeah. It's so, absolute... so you Sorry. not get what's happening to the project itself then? Are you obviously that support's withdrawn where, where, where you're at with it? Then? Well, we've got, we've, I've got to meet with the council. And also, you see, she brought in a guy from the Black Country Chamber of Commerce called Want, who I wasn't sure what he was going to be like, but he was actually quite cool and he took on board all the sort of permaculture type um, suggestions. So there's, there was sort of the three of us. She's had to back off. He's kind of like, ooh, I want to facilitate the thing, but I don't actually want to do anything. So mm. I need to chat to him and the council, and really I need, to, if, I need to step up, well, decide if I'm going to step up. And I think I could, I think, push it through if I step up there, but obviously it's a big commitment. So Right, right. I want to talk to the council first because they, oh, when we talked to them before, um, the there was a lady from Parks and Gardens um, who said to me, well, she said, told me she didn't know what permaculture was when I asked, and then ten minutes later she said, but you can't permaculture a whole allotment. <laughs> right, really, right. So um, yeah, so it's just the council, isn't it? So yeah, so we'll have to yeah. see. But I'd love to self build. That's what I want to do. You know, the proper permaculture, build a community building, but get the community into building. You know, not not go to the council and go. Can we have ten grand or whatever to build a building to yeah. reclaim the materials, get someone in, and you know, group build it, a cob mm. building. Or, yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. You know. That'd so, be amazing. Yeah, uh, I think the council are kind of. I know they're listing um, all their assets at the minute, aren't they? Um, this is are they still really? what. Well, we're having a little look into this. It's all under the Localism Act. I don't know if I mentioned this before to people, because you can write a neighbourhood plan, but the council aren't talking about them because basically it's just a tiny bit where they can't completely bypass the law and they have got to let people get involved, but they're not telling anyone because they don't want people to get involved because they're having to list all their, well, our assets, their assets, and they're going to be selling them off. So... I think that's why they're another reason they're hanging back on the allotment thing because there's a playing field next to it that I think they're earmarked to sell off for housing. So. Oh right, God, yeah, yeah. So, I think that's the whole that's the whole thing. I know we struggle because that's Sand, Sandwell Council, isn't it? Mm, mm. It's like it's. I mean, in the city council, I know it was probably about a year ago. There was this whole thing coming up about um. It basically it's you know any any bit of land or any any building that they can knock down the priority obviously because they want to make money um because the skin is 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 about yeah. you know develop development um yeah. but it's, it's it's the whole thing about putting forward the argument about you know other the other issues you know if the politicians are talking about the importance of health um you know and community cohesion and crime and all that then it's 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 putting the argument about you know the effort the the i guess it's the effort that needs needs to be made, you know, to support you know projects, so they can you know build other other things rather than just kind of fill it with houses. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think Susan's put on there about local schools. Um, I know. Well, I'm sure you probably do, Felipe. I'm um, just about to start working with my kids' local school to help them with their gardening club. Mm. Um, but also Salop Drive, where, where we meet, they do have classes in as in Richmond, um, and they've got a kids' patch and stuff. They're on a kids' Oh, uh, right, well. So do you do, you do I think you mentioned you do work in the schools, don't you, Philly? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, we don't... It's an important place to start, isn't it, really? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's... it's um, I mean, we, we kind of... Uh, some places we go in and and plant the fruit trees at school. We don't do, like, any sort of major ongoing work, but, I mean, we we... we particularly kind of keen on getting you know involved with sort of um with with groups um you know we, we basically i mean ideally won't if we get can get more sort of funding to get um you know more plants is that you know every school in in birmingham and, and surrounding areas to have like an orchard or have you know sort of you know things growing or get i mean for me it's uh, the i guess a realization really that I, it's i feel that it's just so important to almost give everyone the you know the experience of, of planting a tree i think that can be a, it's such an important kind of experience that anyway everyone should have that that opportunity and and like you say it's starting with with children and young people because it's not just about 
you know the the, the planet that that to leave the, the, our planet in a good state to our future generations but it's also about you know the future generations having the the willingness and the skill to to manage you know to look after the planet in whatever state we leave it for them so um you know they say that children these days you know they're so disconnected with, with nature they don't know you know we, we a lot of children don't know where their food comes from um I, and i know that it is good because a lot of schools are making more more of an effort to get people you know children growing their own food and there's some you know i can think of at least two amazing projects in birmingham one called um let's grow together um and the other one's called grow organic uh, and they do work specifically with schools and and getting them to set up um um you know like little kind of um sort of growing patches and beds uh, and what we we want to do is to, is to connect more with these groups and and provide any, all the perennial stuff so you know get them planting orchards we've we've already had probably at least 10 um school groups um that we've supplied sort of fruit trees for um so then you know they've already got their orchards and and the other thing is that you know and one of the things is 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 you know that one of the constraints is about land but then you know you know you get with schools a lot of these schools have got massive massive playing yeah. fields um which you know again it's like you know there's a need in these schools of, for them you know for how you know health and education and for to connect with nature but then they have an amazing resource which is mm-hmm. kind of land and a lot of them is you know massive and and the cost of maintaining it and a lot of these schools now are turning more to um to to you know to, you know having having them as as growing areas and you know we can create you know amazing massive orchards and forest gardens you know by you know with with these spaces so it's it's, it's about connecting one one with the you know the input of one for, and the, with the output of another so uh, yeah there's good good potential there yeah well i think you generally find you know when you work with kids they are quite enthusiastic aren't they um yeah exactly exactly so, um and just about nature in general i know if you if you can't get them digging and planting seeds you can usually mesmerize them by pointing out slugs <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> exactly that, yeah 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 definitely so um yeah i'm looking forward to going in and working in the school they have got massive ground space uh yeah so is that, is that with your children's school then that you'll be doing that work um yeah yeah i mean i had i got a bit of an ulterior motive as well because um <laughs> They're going to have to CRB me, so they'll pay for it as well. So that oh, means right. um, <laughs> that's clever. <laughs> I, I won't have to pay for one myself because I've been doing some stuff with the libraries. Um, I'm going to do some stuff in the Easter holidays, kids activities. You know, just um, making pots out of paint, newspaper. Oh, uh, brilliant! Brilliant. And planting seeds with them and stuff. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. Well, and craft stuff as well because I'm quite into that. You can tie those two. Yeah, yeah, nice one, nice one. Get, get them a bit creative as well, because quite yeah. doing, that sort of, doing that sort of stuff with the kids. Yeah, so. and I, I think it's such a nice combination as well, like creativity with nature. I think it's it's just an amazing kind of like a sort of combination of, of activities that you can connect and, you know, I guess, like you say, connect, you know, get children with it, really. Yeah, brilliant. Definitely. Well, that's one of the things when we have Nettle Fest, which I'm yeah, nice one. harass you about, Philippe. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I look forward to it, actually. It's, it's brilliant. It's, it's a great idea. It's absolutely a brilliant well, idea. I met a couple of guys recently. Um, one is um, does, like, sort of storytelling, you know, that whole kind of old, kind of oral, you know, in the crowd kind of uh, storytelling. And then the other guy's a community artist. Oh, OK. So uh, we're hoping <laughs> to get some community art and that kind of thing going on there as well. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. That sounds excellent. Philippe, do you just want to give out the links to to your groups and the stuff you do, so people can look it up and? Uh, yeah, up? yeah. If, if you check out it, basically, it's the 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 organisation is www.bringtolife.org. Uh, that's the has information about uh, the general um, uh, project um, organisation, and within that, you will find um, in the news section what what we're, we're up to with with Food Forest Brum. Uh, we're also on on Facebook, so just you know, search on Facebook Food Forest Brum, um, and there's um, within either of those you, you can contact us if you wanted to get involved. If you, I mean, if you are in 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 the Birmingham or surrounding areas of Birmingham as well, we we obviously always welcome um, you know volunteers. But or if, you know, if you know of a community project or anything that where you'd like to have support, have you know, get some free training, but also you know have free plants um most importantly you know fruit trees or shrubs or herbs or whatever 
um, then yeah, just just contact us. Yeah. I'm back again now. I think. <laughs> oh man. Right. Well, I just want to thank you so much, Felipe, for jumping on. Honestly, I was I thought my head was going to explode earlier. So. Uh, really, yeah, no, no, no I, th- I appreciate it, actually. I've I re- really enjoyed it. It's gone really quick this hour, and I've really, I've really enjoyed chatting. So, yeah, no, it's, it's nice. I've never done this before. So, uh, yeah, anytime. <laughs> and, and uh, so, yeah, thanks to the people from uh, Dark City as well.